It is time for my July favorites. Yes, it is crazy that it is already August. I tried so many things in July. I did two speed reviews this month of like almost 50, 60 products. So there was a lot to go through. Let's get into it because this is a bigger favorites than normal. So first I'm gonna start off with face primer. So this is the Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer. You're gonna notice a number of Hourglass products in this video because I did get a big PR package from them. So I tried a lot of things that I hadn't tried before. So the first one was the Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer. So I was mistaken. I thought this was an older primer, but this actually is a newer primer. I was mistaking this with the Mineral Veil, but this is the Airbrush Primer and it is so beautiful. I feel like it does a nice job of smoothing pores while also having like a smoothing and hydrating aspect to it. It's very beautiful. It's kind of like the Gucci smoothing primer. I've talked a lot about this, so I'm not going to go too into detail. I'm kind of rounding up my experience with this and it's going to go back into the main collection because I keep all of the products that I'm testing and for future videos in my desk drawer. But I've talked about this in three, four videos now at this point over how much I like it. So we're closing off the chapter here. I love this primer. It's amazing. Hourglass. I love it. <laughs> so the next item that I have is another kind of priming option. I'm just overall so impressed with this product. This is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. So this is e.l.f.'s dupe of the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Filter and I think e.l.f. knocked it out of the park with this. It is not an exact dupe of the Charlotte Tilbury but it's pretty dang close. I would say they look identical on the skin but I would kind of use them differently from each other. So the e.l.f. does have a little bit more pigment to it. With the e.l.f. I just feel like you get a bigger punch with the pigment here. It also is a little bit creamier, whereas the Charlotte Tilbury has more of a metallic finish to it, a little bit on the drier side, which is not a bad thing because I like the creaminess here. So I am more likely to use this as an underlayer, an underpaint for makeup, as opposed to the Charlotte Tilbury, which I think goes really well on top of makeup. Up. If you're oily, I think the Charlotte Tilbury is going to wear well because I do find with this e.l.f. product that when I put it underneath makeup, it does shorten the longevity of my foundation. I get oilier sooner, so that's something to keep in mind because the consistency of it is a little bit thicker and creamier. So while both are great, and if you don't want to spend the $44 on the Charlotte Tilbury, I do recommend the e.l.f., but since I have both, I'm going to use them for different purposes. Today I used three all over the face. And then I use the shade six as an underpaint for bronzer. And I love using shade six to underpaint. I think it looks so beautiful for bronzing. So all these are beautiful. I have a YouTube short on it and I do have a full comparison and review video up on this product. So definitely check that out if you want more details. But I just wanted to update you. I am loving this. I am using this in ways different than how I use Charlotte Tilbury just because of the consistency. But it is beautiful nonetheless. The best foundation I tried this month is Hourglass's newest foundation. This is the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. I am head over heels in love with this foundation. I've worn it so many more times since my original review and I am just as in love with this as I was in the original review. It's a nice lightweight feel on the skin. It gives about a light medium kind of coverage. It's a little bit on the soft matte side with a subtle glow to it. It really embodies what we love about hourglass powders in a foundation. It is so odd. It has these blurring properties. Finally, it's not a glowy foundation that's skincare infused because I'm sorry, those foundations, they emphasize pores on me. They don't wear well. This is everything I personally want in foundation. It just, it feels so lightweight on the skin, you guys. It blurs, it perfects, it wears beautifully. I do find though, it is best applied with a thin layer. The areas that I do build it up or maybe apply it a little bit too much product, it can emphasize a little bit of the stuff that we don't like but if you apply a thin layer it is absolutely gorgeous I've had a few of you though say that the hourglass did not wear well on you so just keep that in mind that maybe longevity is an issue prep properly so for me I will say when I use the elf halo glow underneath the hourglass it does not last the longest but if I prep accordingly I find that the hourglass wears beautifully it stands up well against the Florida heat and humidity even when I 
sweat along my hairline over here. It doesn't make the foundation splotchy. So I highly recommend this. I have mine in the shade 7.5. I think it's an absolutely gorgeous foundation. And random, but I also <laughs> did try this Hourglass Illusion Hyaluronic Skin Tint this month in the PR that package that they sent me. And this was the first Hourglass base complexion product that I'd fallen in love with. I hadn't been a fan of their foundations prior and I was like, wow, this is amazing. Obviously since then I've tried this and I love this one as well. But this is a really great skin tint. I've never heard anybody talking about this. Now this has a little bit more coverage than your average skin tint, so keep that in mind. But I just think it looks really beautiful and blurring on the skin. It feels a little heavier than the other foundation that I talked about, but it does have a nice light coverage that does lean a little bit more on the medium side. It doesn't look heavy. It wears really well. It is a gorgeous skin tint. I, I would say I prefer the foundation more so than the skin tint. But they both are very beautiful products. This has less coverage than the foundation. And the finish on the skin is different as well. But this is also a really beautiful product from Hourglass. So prior to trying the new foundation, I was using this almost every day and absolutely love it. It. Next up, I have a concealer. This is a drugstore concealer that many of you recommended for me, so I was really excited to try it. This is from NYX. This is the Bear With Me Concealer Serum. What a beautiful concealer this is. So it's very lightweight on the under eyes. I mean, it does sink into fine lines a little bit, but nothing really crazy. I think what I love most about this is how natural it looks on the skin and how lightweight. And it has a really great consistency that I find is very versatile. So, you know, you can use it like as foundation or spot concealing or for the under eyes. It has about a medium coverage. You know, it's not the fullest coverage concealer that I've used, but it's a very malleable kind of consistency. It can be used everywhere on the face. I really like the packaging of this. So this is a really great everyday concealer from the drugstore. I can see why you guys recommended this. So thank you very much. I have mine in the shade Golden. You guys weren't kidding. It's gorgeous. I like to use this as an eyeshadow base, carve out my eyebrows, concealer. I use it to cover the redness on my skin. It's just such a great versatile concealer. So thank you. My upper lip sweat's coming through. Oh my goodness. Okay, I have two different powder blush formulas that I was using like crazy this month. So the first one are the new Benefit. They're box blushes. They came out with new colors and they did such a killer job. There were so many colors that came out. My favorites are Peachin, Butterfly, and Willow. So Peachin is a, like a peachy pink kind of shade, definitely on the more natural side. A lot of you are going to like it if you're more on the fair side. Willa is kind of a mauve color. It looks really great with cool tone looks, blues, and purples which are colors that are used often so I use this one a lot and then butterfly is that perfect sunburnt orange kind of look it also has a nice shimmer to it so I've been loving these three I think right now I have peach and on as the base they apply beautifully they smell like a delicious lotion they are fragrance but in the best way possible like I could smell these all day they Ugh, they apply like butter on the skin. They are so, so beautiful. So if you were interested in these blushes, I believe they actually sell them in minis. So you, you know, you don't need to spend a bunch of money, which is what I love about Benefit. I absolutely love how they have minis in their lines. So you don't have to pay the full price. So those are beautiful. Highly recommend those if there's a color that you are into. Okay, next up, these, it took me a while to get on board with them. Like I knew I really liked them, but I was like, do they deserve a spot in this video? But I've decided that these glowy blushes from Lethal Cosmetics do because I feel like they've been the perfect finishing touches to my looks and they have a finish on the skin like no other product that I've ever used. So I have a number of shades. The one that I'm currently wearing right now is Florette. I have it on top of Peachin. And then, you know, there's like a nice light pink color, a nice mauve color, a reddish shade I don't use too often on myself, but I've used it. So these are very interesting products. I don't have a product that work quite like these. They have a lot of pigment, and a lot of glow to them. So when you first dip your brush in like any other blush and you put it on the cheeks, you're going to get way too much pigment and way too much glow. You're going to question if it even is a blush. You know, it has almost the finish of a highlight. But I'm telling you, you guys, if you just get a little bit on your brush, spread it out on two cheeks, and then work the product out, your cheek has the prettiest flush of color, sometimes more than a flush, 
and the prettiest glow on the skin. Once the glow is kind of moved out and blended over the cheeks, it is a stunning glow. Now, if you do not like glowy cheeks, you all like this product. But if you do, there's something special and unique about the way these glow. There was a little bit of learning curve with application, but every time I blend it out, I'm like, yes. But you know, when I started off, I'm like, ooh, but I blend it out, then I'm like, this is a beautiful product. Next up are these quads from ColourPop. These are Super Shock Cheek Highlighter Quads. These are from the Opal Love by Eye collection. I've been loving Super Shock Cheeks from ColourPop lately. They've just been my go-to highlight. I feel like they really blend into the skin seamlessly and create such a pretty, glowy, yet not too overwhelming glow. They came out in this collection with quads, and I can't stop reaching for these. It's just so easy. I do prefer to use a sponge to apply these, just dip it in and spread it out. Now the one that I'm liking more is my Eschel because it's, you know, more skin tone appropriate for me. But I also did try out Shell Ya, which is going to work great for medium to deep complexions. But I actually used these two shades as blushes and they're very pretty as well. Glowy, but very pretty. Anyways, if you like the Super Shock formula from ColourPop, I highly recommend these. They're beautiful. I have the light gold here on my cheek today and the glow is glowing and it looks good. So the last product I have for complexion is from Hourglass. This is the Soft Focus Setting Spray. I believe this one is actually an older product but it is so beautiful if you have dry skin and you're looking for a setting spray to kind of hydrate the skin and add some glow. You see this mist? The most beautiful mist. So refreshing. Just ate some. I don't know, this is like a really good mist. It works. I feel like it really does hydrate the skin. It pulls together, meshes together the products you have on top. And it creates a nice glowy finish to the skin that's not like sweaty. It will dry down. I know I look a little sweaty right now, but it doesn't give that effect. So yeah, Hourglass killed it with the setting spray. I'm pretty picky about setting spray. There's very few that I feel like actually do anything. This is one that does. I have one eyebrow product. This is one that I was not expecting to love at all. I just tried it because it was available to me. This is by the brand Brow Code, and it's their Imitations Micro Brow Pencil. I've been reaching for these so much. I have two shades though my favorite is brunette it has a very fine tip and it is the exact consistency that I tend to look for in eyebrow pencils as well as the size it's I would say maybe a touch creamier than I normally prefer the way that it blends out is perfect it's not too blendable it still holds the integrity of the hair strokes that you add. You have a lot of precision because it's nice and small. I mean, there's so many eyebrow pencils that come out. I try a lot of good ones. I try a lot of ones that I don't like that are not to my taste, but this is the one that I've been reaching for all month. I think it's a great overall brow pencil, so I recommend it. If you do check out Brow Code, I believe they have like laminating kits and stuff like that. So they have a bunch of cool stuff for brows that are worth checking out. I only have one more thing for the eyes. We were definitely a complexion month this month. It's an eyeshadow palette and I use this a lot in preparation for the part two palette to come out. But this is the Glam Light and Michaela Volume 1 palette. This launched last year. It's not a new palette, but it was new to me. I wanted to try it before the newest palettes came out. And oh my gosh, I think that this palette is so beautiful. It is so user-friendly. So the mattes, really great blendable, buildable formula. Sometimes they're a little over blendable, so just be careful. That means you have to really pack on the color. And the shimmers, I mean, Glam Light kills it with the shimmers, okay? The glimmer effect on the eyelids is so crazy and so beautiful. But again, cons, mattes can sometimes overblend, shimmers can crease. So make sure you prep your lids properly. But I'm willing to get past that because I think the price is really good for what you get. And the color story in here is my kind of color story. I mean, Michaela killed it with this. I do have a review with the part two up. Really like that one as well, but this one is more to my taste. Color story wise, purples, greens, blues. So for my look today, it's really, really simple. I'm wearing a navy and white dress. So I went in with the shade Gemini right here, which is a really light, slightly warm transition color. And I started that off as our base here. And then I went in with Freedom 
Town, no, with Freetown. I was not expecting to use this shade very often. I don't normally like blues, but I did blend it in my outer corner and outer half. Very impressed with how this blended. Sometimes blues can be a little crazy, a little hard to work out. This worked out beautifully. I was able to get a soft blend. Now it did overblend a little bit, so I did have to layer on more than I would have preferred, but that's okay because I got a really beautiful soft blend out here. And then I finished with accent. I only used three shades right here, and this is the inner half of my eyelid color. You can kind of see it already starting to crease, so I'll just keep that in mind, but I got creasy eyelids, so it, it happens. It's fine. Anyways, beautiful look, still wearable enough. Got to use colors. I'm loving this Michaela palette. I've been using it a lot. I've been feeling inspired by it and the color story here, so she killed it. I'm so late on this, but I've been loving it this month. I know some of you are gonna ask about the new Pat McGrath palette. Honestly, you guys, I've only gotten to use it once, and that was the time that I reviewed it because I reviewed it and then I had to leave because I actually went on a staycation this weekend because my parents are here right now. <laughs> so I haven't got the chance to really dive in, but you guys know my first impressions. Not my favorite palette from Pat McGrath, but I'm gonna keep using it. I have high hopes because I feel like I will be able to curate some looks that I will love with that, but not yet. Haven't used it enough yet to put it in this video. Upper lip sweat trick, okay. Finally, lips. Okay, so I did a sponsorship with City Beauty on their lip products for National Lipstick Day a couple days ago. So good. I just need to talk about if you want the most long-lasting, smooth-looking lips. These are amazing. They give a plump as well. So right now I'm wearing the City Lips Matte in Pink Taupe. So this is the prettiest kind of cool, taupey pink color. Oh my gosh, Morgan. <laughs> Not original at all. But the liquid lipsticks, they're not my all-time favorite liquid lipsticks, but they last so well, and they aren't too drying. So they're a very nice, thin layer, but it's the combo with the City Lip Mattes and the City Lips, which are lip glosses. My two favorite shades, Clear, just great to throw on, and then Pink Nude, which is what I have on today. They have a really excellent shade range with these glosses right here. Some are very pigmented, some are more sheer, some have a metallic shimmer finish. The clear one you can't go wrong with. So these glosses are incredible. Again, they last a long time. They hydrate the lips, they smooth over fine lines on the lips, and they have a plumping aspect that is not too overwhelming. And if you have mature lips, these are really great because City Beauty, they formulate their products with mature skin in mind. But I'm telling you, the combo of the matte and the gloss, one of the most long-lasting combos, as well as your lips stay hydrated and plump. This is not sponsored, nobody asked me to talk about this. I've genuinely been wearing this lip combo so much and I've been enjoying it so much. So, I mean, you guys know, I don't take sponsorships for crappy products. I just don't. So extra shout out for these because they're that amazing. So that is all I have for beauty. I do have my purse of the month and I don't think I've showed you guys this one yet. I ordered this about a month ago and it took a while to get to me. They were on back order. I did get the, it on sale. So I actually have a purse video coming up because I picked up a couple ones from Coach this weekend. So I was going to pop this one in here, but I used this all weekend and it still is available and it's still on sale it's not cheap though but let me show you <laughs> this is from tori birch and you guys know i've been building my tori birch collection not that i like need to have a billion purses but i just wanted like one or two more and i wanted like a classic kira bag the chevron print i do have a like a really small crochet kira which i love i love a flap kind of purse but i wanted this one in this size so here's what she looks like. She is so beautiful. Again, I used this on my staycation this weekend. It's big enough to hold all my crap, but it doesn't overpower my frame because you guys know I'm only 4'10", 4'11". So this is the Tory Burch Kira Chevron small convertible shoulder bag in the shade Meadow Sweet slash rolled gold. The price on this is $548, but it is on sale right now for $384. I got it at a little bit of a bigger discount for around the $300 price point, but I am so happy because the Kira bags in this style don't normally go on a deep discount because they're more of a classic style from the brand. I just think she's so beautiful. I love this color as well. I don't have any bags this color. And then here's what the back looks like and why it's convertible is because you can wear it as 
a shoulder bag or you can wear it as a crossbody. Now the strap, you guys know one of my main concern with purses is the strap because I am so petite. This does not work for me as a crossbody, way too long, but I'm okay with that because I will only be using this as a shoulder bag anyways. It's a little bit lower than most shoulder bags. It's not close to my armpit at all, which is how I feel a lot of shoulder bags are nowadays. This goes pretty low, but I actually like that. Um, and it's so spacious. Look, you can see all my junk that I have in here. There's a few different pockets and zippers. It's a kick butt purse. I've been loving it. It's bigger actually than most of the purses that I go for, and this is a small size, but it's perfect for me. I'm not a person that that really carries around a ton of stuff. I have a bunch of junk in here just because I was away, but normally I just bring my phone and cards so I can get away with something really small. So when I need to carry more stuff, this is perfect and I love the color. It's just so pretty, so well made. I'm really, really happy about this purchase. I'll talk about it a little bit more in my next purse video, but that has been my purse of the month. But anyways, that is all I have for my July favorites. Let me know down below your favorite products that you tried down below. Anyways, thank you guys so much for liking this video and subscribing to my channel, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye guys, have a good one. Oh, and by the way, I'm gonna mention this in a few videos, but my parents are here right now in Miami with me, and I'm still doing a little bit of work, but not like I was used to, so the uploads are not gonna be every day for the next couple of weeks. Still working, still doing stuff, but yeah, it's not that big of a deal, but I'm just not gonna be uploading every day. So anyways, okay, bye. <laughs>